everyone welcome back to the channel it's now mid-september the leaves are starting to drop from the trees and we've had a couple of overnight temperatures dropping down to three four degrees literally a couple of weeks left of the trout fishing season so trying to make the the most of that to be honest i had every intention this year of fishing a lot more small streams there's a, a a load of them in in my area a lot which in fairness I've overlooked over the years uh, this season I did intend to fish a lot more of them but between one thing and another but more than anything due to the drought conditions we had throughout the summer didn't happen so it's now very late in the season really I'm saying scratching the last couple of weeks of the season just trying to make the most of it and get out there and get a couple of fish before the season draws to a close river behind behind me here to the side of me here now is um, it's a, a small river but a very famous river in terms of <coughs> salmon and sea trout like with most of these rivers or quite often with most of these, uh, these rivers the brown trout fishing then tends to get overlooked it's not because the trout fishing isn't any good but the main focus on these rivers tends to be salmon and sea trout fishing which in fairness I love because quite often then the, the, the trout don't tend to get the same fishing pressure and you can get some amazing day ticket sports and this is day ticket water uh, make no mistake but again people just tend to buy the day tickets from the salmon and sea trout perspective so I've turned up again it's been cold overnight I did expect it to be mainly nymph fishing today so I've turned up with my Sage Sonic 10 foot 3 weight which is my main nymphing rod but in fairness I've seen a few fish rise already so anybody that knows me, if there's a fish rising, I'd rather get it off the top. No doubt, you know, there's going to be a couple of great nymphing runs, so we will end up nymphing at some point today. But if they are rising for the time being, let's get them on the dries. There's a few stonefly coming down, and then I'm seeing some midge. There's more midge, so they're probably more on the midge. But the other thing you should look out for this time of year, there's a load of leaves starting to fall just with the cold temperatures. And with those leaves, you tend to get a lot of terrestrials, a lot of ants, all sorts of bugs basically food for for the fish and the fish know this so if you get a, a, a steady stream if you've got a, a white uh, froth or uh, basically it's a feeding lane but if you get the, a concentration of the leaves coming down in a line the fish tend to hang around there quite simply because that's where the main channel of food is coming down and because of that you want to fish more of a, a generic pattern it tends to be smaller patterns but more generic patterns rather than specific patterns as you would earlier in the year if you are definitely matching the hatch so again we'll start with the dry and see how that takes us and we'll probably end up nymphing and see see what we can pull out on that front as well but uh, let's see what the the day has in store for us There were a couple of fish rising underneath the tree over there but it's literally inches deep and before I could even get close to them they'd pushed up but um, I think they may be the same fish there's a really nice feeding lane if you look at all the froth being concentrated in the center here that's basically where all the foods coming down and there's a couple of fish just rising slowly in the middle of that uh, feeding lane so they're pretty sporadic I'm gonna give them a go I've just got a little little midge pattern on for the time being it's got a bit of a flashback thing on it to be fair it should cover a bit of everything yeah there's a couple of fish just up to my just on my right hand side here I was gonna try and we're in a tricky spot I've got trees behind above everything so it's just gonna be a really short flick over these fish and hopefully one of them will make a mistake so let's find out yep straight away that's decent oh no oh 
oh man off that's a decent fish too let's let him settle for a second that's a decent fish but first cast he absolutely nailed it so hopefully that's a sign of things to come anyway yeah actually the other fish there was two of them feeding alongside each other the second fish didn't seem to be too put off by his friend at friend's antics because he's straight back up so it's gonna dry the dry the wing off slightly and get straight back in see if we can pin one of these for the camera that was a good start that was literally the first cast anyway so at least we know the the fly works I'm just gonna dry the wing off a bit okay pretty simple pattern to be honest it's not one of mine I'm not sure where I've got it from um, thank you whoever gave it to me it was on my patch so that's what I went for it's uh, yeah a little little midge pattern and saying it's got a little flash across the back these fish liked it anyway okay there's one a bit more in that feeding lane now I'm gonna try and get the fly over him looks a like good fish again Okay, that actually looks like a, a decent cast for him. Yep, he's got it. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's a good fish. Oh, that's a really good fish. Not quite what I was expecting, to be honest. Get away from that stick. Okay, good. I've got him away from the rest of the fish. Okay. Slightly bigger than what I thought he was, to be honest. He looks a good 18 inch or so. I don't want him to go bonkers here, to be honest. No, he's probably... Yeah, he's a good fish. He's just wrapped himself in the leader. Wrapped himself in the leader. <laughs> just just under 18 inches so 17 and 17 and three quarter cracking fish especially on the dries great condition too really great condition cockfish beautiful wild fish let's slip him back and hopefully we'll get some of his friends to play as well sorting out my fly after landing that really nice cockfish cockfish especially late season they can have really sharp teeth so a bit of advice always cut and retie your fly after landing the fish and maybe even lose the, the one two inches closest to the fly because that can really be cut up on the, uh, on the on the fish's teeth so I've done that I've also then applied some mud on the last couple of feet and then I've put a mus uh, put a muslin up the the last rest of the nylon up to the fly line but as I was doing that there's actually a really nice fish started to rise opposite me but and there he goes again opposite but slightly down river so I'm actually going to try and pick this one off um it's not going to be easy i'm gonna to have to slightly drop some slack back into him but he looks like a pretty decent fish so let's see how we get on with him again i've got no room on my back cast but there he goes again i don't think i'll need much of a, a cast to get back to him he's feeding nicely but he's in super shallow water so let's see if we can pick him off i'm pretty happy he's feeding every few seconds so he's there he goes again All right so i'm going to go for a bit of a, a roll cast here just to get the 
I think that distance looks pretty good. I'm not going to lead him too far. That looks pretty perfect for him, actually. No, oh, that's surprising. He didn't... Uh, oh, I may have gone slightly too far. So I'm just going to slowly just let that drift pass in there. I'm going to kick that back into a little roll cast again. Let's see if he gets it this time. Flight just started to drag when I got to him that time. I was going to check the flight. The only problem with doing these roll casts is the waterborne casts, and you often drag the flight under. So that little CDC pattern is a bit worse for wear after that last fish, so I've actually just cut it off and gone for just a full it's a full kind of dry midge pattern and that fish is just sipping away here this should react a bit better to roll cast so I shouldn't drag under as easily so let's give it a go with this new pattern There he goes. Oh, bugger. Bugger, bugger, bugger. That was him. That's the only problem from this angle. I was always pulling slightly up and out of him. He took it. He took it. That looks good. Yep. Oh, man. A little bit faster than there, I reckon. That was him though. Got a nicer drift that time. He's giving me a few chances here. As soon as the sun came out, that fish just stopped rising over here to my right. But now there is one immediately below me, which I'm going to try and just drift the fly back to. See if I can. Get him, he's in pretty skinny water, so actually I don't want to move too much from here because chances are if I do, I'll just end up spooking him. So what I'm going to do is just try and throw enough slack into the line to get back to him. He's moved a couple of times there, and actually I can see another fish just to the left of him. Actually another fish moved back over there now, that's the first time he's moved over there. For this guy, he's moved a couple of times. So let's see if we can... Uh, See if we can tempt him. But we'll just going to have to throw a lot of slack in. Okay, that's good. Let's just drift the slack back to him. Yep, got him. Well, that worked. That worked. Ah! Oh. <laughs> and now I'm in the tree. Yay! There's a couple of fish still rising sporadically, but for the main part, it's gone pretty quiet on the surface. So I'm just carrying the, the one rod. And again, it is a nymph rod. So I'm basically chopping and changing. So what I've done now is I've kept the, the dry fly tapered leader on, which is a 12 foot, I think it's 3X tapered leader. So all I've done now is I've put a length of fluorescent material on the end of it which is essentially my indicator even though I will be keeping it primarily above the water surface then I've just put a 
like a six foot leader or so with a couple of small nymphs both I think they're both 18s actually um, the fish again I think they're still pretty much on the on the midge here so um, but again the, the, there are a few olives and all sorts coming off so just a couple of generic little patterns nothing nothing too complicated well that didn't take long we're into a serious fish here serious fish just on the small nymphs good fish really good fish I think he's actually on the dropper looks another good fish definitely might be bigger than the last one I think and I think this one may be closer to 20 inches yeah it must be good fish and all these fish are wild as well which makes them all the more special this is a good fish on that little size 18 Whoa. I don't want to go too heavy on him a good fish looks just about ready sneak in with a net yeah god that's a good fish that is a good fish let's take him to the edge yeah that's a serious fish for a wild fish that's a seriously good fish it's going to keep it in the water usually when you just keep them on their side like that they're pretty well behaved I reckon this must be 20 inches. Not far off anyway. Yeah, exactly 20 inches actually. No, well, just a smidgen over, but 20 inches nonetheless. What a cracking fish. Cracking fish. A bit of damage on the gill plate there. Otherwise, pristine. Thank you.